Hello everyone and welcome. This is wild. So there is fuel sold in the United States as regular gas that if you use could actually void your vehicle's warranty. So this is a quote from the 2021 Ford F-150's owner manual, the most popular car sold in America. Your vehicle operates on regular unleaded gasoline with a minimum pump octane rating of 87. Some fuel stations, particularly those in high altitude areas, offer fuels posted as regular unleaded gasoline with an octane rating below 87. The use of these fuels could result in engine damage that will not be covered by the vehicle warranty. So if you've driven through a high elevation state like Wyoming, for example, you may see listed as regular gas the number 85 rather than 87. And it's that number 85 or 86 that becomes problematic. So why does this happen and what does all of this mean? Uh, and ultimately our final conclusion is pretty crazy and it's pretty wild that this is actually occurring. Starting off, what does this octane number mean? So you'll see numbers like 87 for regular, uh, you know, 90 91 plus, you could be 93 for premium gas. So this number is the octane rating, and basically what it means is it's resistance to knock. So the higher the number, the more resistant to knock that fuel is. And so as you get to higher elevations, as you drive in higher elevations, it's less likely that your engine will have knock, and so they offer these lower octane numbers uh, as the base regular gas. Now, how and why? So knock, what is knock? Well, when you have your four strokes, intake, compression, power, and exhaust, you ignite that air fuel mixture with a spark plug, and that starts a burning flame coming out from that spark plug. Well, if you have combustion occur from the added pressure within that combustion chamber, say like in a corner over here, and that pressure and heat causes that little pocket to ignite on its own before that flame has reached it, well, that's knock and it can cause problems and it can damage your engine. So you don't want this to happen. And it occurs because you had too much compression in that pocket, too much heat, and it caused that air and fuel to combust on its own. So why is this less likely at elevation? Well, you can think of air pressure uh, like the weight of everything above you, right? So if you're at sea level, there's a lot of air above you and there's a lot of weight above you. So as you go higher up, there's less air above you and that's, there's less pressure from the air above you. So at sea level, if you're able to pull in atmospheric air, you're able to pull in 14.7 PSI during that intake stroke in your cylinder, or one bar, 100% of the air outside, you're putting inside that engine. As you go up to 5,000 feet, well, the air pressure outside is less. It's just 12.2 PSI or 0.83 bar. So you're not able to put as much air inside that cylinder. You still pull in the same volume, but the pressure within that cylinder is less. So then if you get to 10,000 feet, you have even less air. So you're at 0.7 bar of pressure inside or 10.2 PSI, 70% of what we had at sea level. So we're losing 30% of the air just by going up 10,000 feet or about 3,000 meters. So now when we take each of these cylinders and we compress that air down, that air and fuel down to then ignite it, well, because we have so much less to start off with, we're gonna have lower pressures in this engine so we're going to have less chance of knock because we're not getting as much pressure and as much heat in that cylinder. So knock is going to be much more likely to occur at sea level where you have more air and more pressure in that cylinder and thus you can get away with a lower octane number at higher elevations, right? Well, it's not that simple for new cars. However, there is some truth to that for old cars. So we're looking at a graph here. I found a study from 1942, and basically what they were looking to seek out is, if my octane requirement at sea level is X, what is my octane requirement as I get to higher elevations? Because you have this effect of having less pressure, and so you're going to have less chance of knock. And so from this study from 1942, what they found is, using a research engine, they found if you started off and you needed a octane number of 100 for your engine, then if you were operating at 5,000 feet, the octane rating you need of fuel would only be 94. And at 10,000 feet, it would only be 85. They did the same thing for fuel at 85. If you needed an 85 octane number at sea level, 
At 10,000 feet, you only need an octane rating of 50, so it drops quite a bit. So you can see here these drops. Um, with our example at 100, it's dropping 1.5, not a linear relationship, but you're losing about 1.5 in that octane requirement uh, for every 1,000 feet you go up. So this is true for older cars. Now I found another study looking to test this out on modern cars, modern being 1987, and so instead of this number of about, you know, let's say two uh, octane numbers dropping, the requirement dropping by two uh, for every thousand feet, instead now it was just 0 0.2 for every thousand feet. So for example, this 100 with a modern car, modern again 1987, instead of dropping to 85 here at 10,000 feet, the octane requirement would drop to 98. So barely not at all. So for that newer car, you weren't able to get away with that lower octane number. And they said in fact there was no impact up to 3,300 feet. Uh, so pretty crazy that these modern cars were not able Able to you know reduce the octane number as much now why is that well to understand this we need to know the mechanical differences between old engines and newer engines so old engines were carbureted meaning they had mechanical control of fuel injection and they had mechanical control of ignition timing when that spark plug fired and so this was generally based on your manifold pressure so if it saw that you had a higher pressure in your intake manifold it meant that the you know the drivers flooring it they're asking for full power so that manifold gets a high pressure within it and so the timing controls do two things. They enrich in the air fuel mixture, meaning they spray in more fuel, and they also retard the ignition timing, meaning they, they ignite the spark plug a little bit later. Both of these actions allow you to run at a higher load without worrying about having knock. Now what happens when you're driving at a high elevation? Well you never reach that really high manifold pressure because your ambient pressure is too low. And so you're telling the vehicle, hey I want full power, but it doesn't actually get full power because there's not enough air outside to do it. And so because of that, because you're only actually running at a partial load, you don't need that high octane requirement, instead you need a significantly lower number. Now, new engines can compensate for this because they have electronic fuel injection and they have electronic ignition timing. So you can maximize horsepower, you can maximize efficiency, and you can minimize knock by playing with your exact air-fuel ratio and by playing with your ignition timing. Regardless of what RPM you're at, regardless of whether you're at full load or low load, and so you have complete control over that ignition timing and your, your air-fuel ratio and so you can optimize these variables. And so what that means is, even when you're driving at a really high elevation, you can use things like timing advance to help minimize that impact of elevation on your performance. You can still maximize output and efficiency by playing with these fuel and ignition timing variables. So let's talk about the problem here because I think realistically, do I think that if you're driving a modern car and you put 85 octane in it, it's gonna destroy that engine? No, I think that's very unlikely. We have modern engine controls that can help prevent damage from occurring to an engine. Do I think Ford's gonna hunt you down and make you pay for all the damage that occurs if you happen to use 85 in your F-150 and you get knocked? I also think that's pretty unlikely. But technically and legally, they have the right to do that and it's crazy to me that we sell a fuel that could potentially cause that problem to occur. So I want to talk about what is less likely uh, that problems will occur versus what is more likely that you will have problems occur depending on what vehicle you drive. So it's less likely for you to have problems if you're driving an older car, if you're driving a carbureted car, if you're driving a car that is naturally aspirated, meaning the pressures within the cylinders are not all that high, or if you stay within the area, right? If you live at 9,000 feet and you just drive around at 9,000 thousand feet you know, not as likely that you're gonna run into problems versus if you live at 9,000 feet, you take that fuel down to sea level and then keep using the car. Then you have those higher pressures and now you could run into trouble. Also, if you just don't use high throttle, if you're always driving around with low or mid throttle, not using the full power of your engine, well, you've got lower pressures in your cylinders, so it's less likely that you'll have problems from knock. 
Now, what causes it to be more likely? If you have a modern car, if you have electronic fuel injection and electronic ignition timing, if you have a turbocharged or supercharged cars, these are cars that are adding in more pressure on top of atmospheric, so you have really high cylinder pressures, which means you're more likely to run into knock issues. Uh, if you drive down to a lower elevation with that fuel from a higher elevation, and if you drive around at full throttle a lot where you're putting high pressures in your cylinders. So just as kind of a, an example of like what's worst case scenario that might happen with this Ford F-150 and why might you see this notice in their owner's manual? Well, let's say you have a Ford F-150 and you're towing a camper. That sounds like a very reasonable solution. You're driving along, you drive up this mountain, you get up to 10,000 feet and you refuel with that low octane, that 85 octane fuel. Then you're driving down, you come back down to sea level, and then you start coming up this hill. So you're going uphill with a trailer, really high load on the engine, it's a turbocharged vehicle, so you're at a low elevation now and you're starting to go uphill. So you've got the highest pressures, the highest demand on that engine, and now you're using a fuel that's from a higher elevation and not meant for this scenario. So that's where you could run into that problem of knock. Uh, that's kind of, you know, like a more likely that you would experience problems than if you're just driving around up here without the trailer, you know, driving on a level ground. So there are scenarios which it seems like, hey, you definitely don't want to do this. Ford actually recommends you using premium fuel if you're towing because you are putting those higher demands on the engine for longer periods of time and that helps it run better and not run into knock issues. And one final quote uh, that I thought was pretty wild from the US Department of Energy on 85 octane fuel, they say, the sale of 85 octane fuel was originally allowed in high elevation regions where the barometric pressure is lower because it was cheaper and because most carbureted engines tolerated it fairly well. This is not true for modern gasoline engines. So, unless you have an older vehicle with a carbureted engine, you should use the manufacturer recommended fuel for your vehicle even where 85 octane fuel is available. And that's just pretty crazy to me because we're allowing the sale of this fuel in the US and then saying don't use it with your modern car. That's pretty bonkers. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.